I'm sure that you have seen that visual effects has transformed the entertainment industry, allowing filmmakers to bring their wildest imaginations to life. And one of the most exciting applications of this technology is the creation of digital doubles. So with digital doubles, filmmakers can create stunning visuals with intricate details, for example, for high-stake action scenes that would be impossible to achieve with traditional special effects or live-action stunts. But before we start to understand why we need digital doubles in VFX, first we should know more about what digital doubles are in the first place. The use of digital doubles in movies dates back to the early days of CGI. It involves capturing the likeness, motion, and expression of a real actor and transferring them to a 3D model that can be manipulated and animated in a virtual environment. Generally speaking, a digital double is a computer-generated replica of a real-life person. The idea is not to build a human from scratch, but to reproduce a captured subject as accurately as possible. Even if the character is fictional, digital doubles can be used to generate its animation directly from an actor's performance. An authentic digital double is one that convinces the viewer to believe the actor's performance is faithfully presented on screen and in the environment. I would like to think of digital doubles as digital stuntmen, which is now being used for a large variety of purposes, as you can imagine. Filmmakers use digital doubles to save money on stunt doubles, portray actors in extreme scenarios, create animated sequences that an actor never actually performed, or in other cases, they use digital doubles to replicate actors who have passed away, like in the case of Paul Walker in the Fast and Furious franchise. And if you haven't noticed, over the years this technology has significantly improved, to the extent that right now I think you can't tell the difference unless it is a close-up shot. You might think this is a new thing. But this technology has been used in film visual effects for the last three decades. To a regular person, it is very hard to tell whether something is real or a digital double. One of the most famous examples is the bullet time effect in the Matrix trilogy, in which Keanu Reeves, or let's say his character Neo, don't just bullets in slow motion. This iconic sequence was achieved by filming live-action shots of Reeves and then integrating them with computer-generated versions of him that were created using motion capture technology. And since then, the use of digital devils has only grown more widespread and sophisticated, and they can now be used to give the film a sense of scale and elevated stakes that would have been difficult or impossible to achieve with traditional special effects. Alternative applications like facial animation technology, as an example the use of digital humans and deepfakes, and the use of performance of other actors to amalgamate them into an entirely different character is actually different from using digital doubles, because with digital doubles it is real performances from real people, preserving the integrity and authenticity of actors capturing their talent in its entirety. In a sense, it is no different than seeing the performance of an actor on the screen unless you take a very close-up shot, in which case you may notice the difference. Generally speaking, digital doubles provide a way to blend the imagination and flexibility with the precision of live performance. They also enable the creation of replicate actors in a way that is indistinguishable to the audience. And over the last few years, film and TV productions have started using digital doubles for certain action scenes. A 3D model copy of the character is made completely digitally and inserted into a sequence, often to complete a superhuman feat that the actor or even a well-trained stunt performer simply could not do. It usually starts with a digital photo scan of the actor, which gives a 3D model and texture reference of the actor, which is often then used as a basis for building digital assets, and this technique of photo scanning is known as photogrammetry. Many movies use digital doubles in some capacity, ranging from subtle visual effects to entire sequences created with CGI characters, and its use has been recently common in recent years, especially with advancements in CGI. And at this point, I think you might be curious about the technical know-how required for a professional to create a digital double. There are actually a specific set of steps that are required to be followed to achieve a digital clone that is gonna be used inside a VFX shot. 
and the process usually begins with capturing the subject, which is the actor. In this step, photogrammetry can be used to capture the actor's appearance and the performance using different methods and devices. For example, they can use it to make multiple photos of the actor from different angles and stitch them together to create a 3D mesh and textures. And CGI artists can also use a 3D scanner to scan the actor's face and body in high detail. And to capture the actor's motion, motion capture suits and facial capture systems are needed to record the actor's movements and facial muscles, which will be later transferred into the computer. You might have seen these rigs with hundreds of cameras around the actor ready to capture all the image data with a click of a button. The next step is to clean and optimize the data that you capture to make it suitable for 3D modeling. This involves removing artifacts and unwanted elements from the 3D mesh and texture, things such as hair, clothing, and the background. It is also required to reduce polygon count and resolution of the scan to make it more manageable and compatible with 3D modeling software. And since the raw data needs to be extremely of high quality, this step is also extremely important for the successful execution of the steps ahead. The third step is rigging and animating the model using the motion and expression data that was captured. And rigging is the process of creating a skeleton and controls for the model that allows you to pose and deform it. Animating usually includes the process of applying the motion and expression data to create lifelike movements and expressions as you might expect. And nowadays, stunt people can also be used just to capture the performance while still retaining the digital likeness of the actor. So, filmmakers no longer need to hide the actor's faces when it comes to filming complex action scenes. <laughs> That's my mom. And a final step is to render and composite the model using lighting, shading, and effects to create a realistic and seamless integration with the original footage of the environment. And rendering is the process of generating images or videos from the 3D model using a render engine that simulates light, shadows, reflections, and other aspects. And compositing is gonna be used to combine the rendered images or videos with the original footage or environment, which allows the artist to adjust the color, contrast, and other parameters. This step could make or break a digital double. If lighting, for example, of your digital double doesn't match the live plate, it is gonna be an immediate giveaway for the audience and it can also raise a concern for the double falling into the uncanny valley. So, as we have seen together, we can see a vast improvement in the technology as facial performance capture continues to improve and the level of fidelity gets closer to real life. 3D scanning technology will also continue to be faster and more accurate, which will require different ways of interpreting the data. And as technology continues to advance, the possibilities of what we can create with digital doubles is gonna be endless, and we can expect to see even more incredible moments in movies. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.